Hey guys, color correction is an important part to making sure that your video doesn't come out looking a little bit too blue or a little bit too purple and it looks as good as it can no matter which device your audience is watching on. I have quite a few tutorials on my channel already where I cover color correction and color grading in both Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. However, one cool feature I have not yet talked about, which has now also made its way into Adobe After Effects with the last release, are the Lumetri scopes and the Lumetri color tools. In this quick video, I want to show you how easy it is to use these tools to make your video look that much better. Welcome to the wonderful world of Adobe Premiere Pro and the sequence I have here is the ungraded version of our VFX short film It's a Bomb. I know that everyone's workflow is different. What I personally like to do is I like to create my edit in Premiere Pro, then color correct everything, bring it into Adobe After Effects and generate all of the VFX shots that I need, then bring all of those VFX shots back into Premiere Pro for the final grading. I already talked about how to use the Lumetri scopes for color correction and color grading in Premiere Pro, but now because the latest version of Adobe After Effects also includes Lumetri color and Lumetri scopes, I really wanted to make a dedicated video to explain those tools. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you will find the Lumetri tools if you come up into the main menu, click on Window, and then a little bit further down, you will find Lumetri color and Lumetri scopes. Let's open up the scopes first. Let me bring this into the screen and your Lumetri scopes may look slightly different or you may see slightly different scopes here and you can simply right click into this panel and determine what type of vector scopes you want to see, what type of histograms you want to see, there's a bunch of presets for different things, parade types, waveform times, color spaces, a whole bunch of different options. I'm just going to reset a few of these things. Usually what I like to see is I like to see the vector scope this is the top right here. On the left, I'd like to see the waveform monitor. And at the bottom, I usually like to have my RGB parade. Now, I don't intend to cover these tools again in just as much depth as I did in my color correction in Premiere Pro tutorial, but just very quickly for those people who are not at all familiar with scopes, scopes are used to analyze the color information in your image so that you can make some informed decisions around how to color correct and color grade your clips. You should find these or similar tools in pretty much any editing tool that you are using. The cool thing with Premiere Pro is that as you scrub through, you will see these scopes update and it's actually pretty fast with the Lumetri scopes. They're much quicker than the old scopes that used to be integrated into Premiere Pro. So they'll update pretty much in real time. And you can see that all of these change because they are displaying the information of color for the current frame that is at your current timeline indicator. Just as a very quick rundown, this round circle here in the top right is a vector scope and the vector scope displays color information so it shows you how much saturation you have in your image and in which direction of the color wheel it is saturated. So right now here's quite a bit of red and yellow in my image which obviously is this flame and the glow on Walter's face. If I go forward a little bit, for example here you can see it's mainly red and yellow because everything is kind of on fire. On the left side here, I have the waveform monitor and this displays brightness information and it goes from zero, which is perfect black, all the way up to 100, which is perfect white. So as you scrub through, you can see that update as well. So for example here, this image goes from about 15%, so it doesn't go all the way to black. There's no perfect black in this image, it goes up to maybe around 90 and there's two really bright spots here in the middle of the image and that is this light over here. And then there's a very bright light on the right side as well, which is this bright spot here on the right side of the waveform monitor. At the bottom, you will see the RGB parade. And the RGB parade is essentially like a waveform monitor, but split into your red, green, and blue channel. So these ones show you how much color is in your image at which point. So right now here I can see there's some really bright red, green, and blue in the middle, and that's actually adding up to this white on my waveform monitor. But maybe if I scrub over a little bit more towards the right here, for example, you can see it quite clearly that the red in my image is much stronger and the vector scope, you can see that as well, there's a lot of red and yellow. Actually, this is way oversaturated, we'll need to fix this. Um, but there's a lot of red, a little bit of green, and a little bit of blue. But this image is mainly red, as you can see from all of these scopes. But now, let's close down the Lumetri scopes come up into window and let's bring up the other tool that goes hand in hand with the scopes and that is the Lumetri color tools. Let's bring that one up and let me drag this into the screen. The Lumetri color panel is essentially your one-stop shop for all tools that you may need for color correcting and color grading. 
In the Lumetri color tools, you will have a number of panels and you can actually click on these to expand them and collapse them. And so in here, you will find tools for basic correction. You will find tools for creative styling. So this is for color grading. You will find curves, which is a more technical way to control the color in your image. You will find color wheels, which again allows you to more technically adjust the tints in different parts of your image. Then you will find HSL secondary, which is secondary color correction. It's a bit more technical, but we're going to go over that in a minute. And then at the end, you can apply a vignette, which is nice and easy, just all integrated into the Lumetri color. Let me quickly close this for you. And let's jump over to our effects panel. And let's expand the video effects. And down in here, you will find tabs for color correction. And here's a whole bunch of individual effects, obviously Lumetri colors in here as well. The Lumetri color effect and the reason I like these tools so much is because it essentially encompasses all of the other ones. You don't have to bother with all of these technical ones. You can simply come up in the window, Lumetri color. And then in here, you can apply every single type of color correction or color grading that you want. Let me scrub back just a little bit. So maybe to about here, just because I like this image and I think this will give us quite a few cool things to play with. And let's come into the Lumetri color panel. Let's expand the basic correction. You can apply an input LUT, which is a lookup table. So transform the input colors to a different set of colors. And in here, you can select different LUTs and apply all sorts of predefined looks and transformations. But for now, let's leave that on none. And then obviously we can adjust the white balance if we're not properly white correct. So you can kind of push it into the blue or the orange or the green or the magenta, depending on how we want to adjust the tones. And usually what I like to do is I actually have Lumetri color and I have the Lumetri scopes panel open at the same time because um, I'm not sure how this is going to fit on my screen space. Let's bring up the Lumetri scopes and bring that over to the right hand side. And maybe I'll squish this just a little bit so you can see what's happening. And now as I adjust temperatures or exposure, or contrast, you can see all of the scopes update in real time. So I can really see what effect all of my color correction and grading has on the actual image. And the scopes are great because it makes it independent of the monitor because sometimes your monitor lies to you. But when you look at the scopes, which display the technical information of all of the color in your image, it's much easier to correct and grade properly. For now, however, let's not bother with the scopes. Let's simply come back in here. And what I'm going to do is in the basic correction at the bottom, I'm just going to click reset. And for this tutorial, I'm just going to eyeball it without the scopes, but the image does look a little bit dark to me. So let's just bring up the exposure and maybe add just a little bit more contrast. You have sliders to control the highlights. So only the bright parts of your image are only the shadows so only the dark parts. So I can kind of bring the highlights down a little bit to darken these lamps just a little and maybe I'll push the shadows in a little so it's a little bit more even. And finally, I can also adjust the white and the black points, but I'm actually quite happy with how they look. And saturation wise, I don't want to go overboard either. So I think I'm actually quite happy with it. You can also double click these sliders to just reset them to the default value, which is kind of cool. So it makes it nice and easy if you wanted to reset individual ones. So let's say we're done with the basic correction. Let's collapse this panel and let's bring up the creative tab. Now, one thing that happens as you start playing with Lumetri Color, let me drag this out. Adobe Premiere Pro has automatically applied a Lumetri Color effect to this clip that was under my cursor. If I was to delete this effect, all of my color adjustments would go. Let me undo that again. So here's the Lumetri Color effect. So by making any changes in the Lumetri Color panel, Adobe will automatically add this Lumetri Color effect to the clip that I'm currently working with. And this contains all of the settings and all of the tweaks that I'm making in this Lumetri Color panel. To me, that's a big benefit of using the Lumetri color tools. I don't have to drag effects around to apply them to my clips. I just pop open this panel and start correcting and grading. In the creative tab, you can be, well, creative. This is where I usually do all of my color grading. Um, it works similar to tools such as Magic Bullet Looks or Speed Grade. So you can actually apply looks from this drop down, and there's quite a large number of them. So you can kind of pick them and just apply them to your footage. So there you go. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And now I've already ranted a little bit about these drop down selectors that Adobe keeps implementing that are really not very user friendly. Mouse wheel doesn't work. Yes, I know I can shortcut key them, but it's, it's just really not manageable. I'm not a big fan. However, in the Lumetri color panel, they've actually implemented something a little bit smarter. And in this little preview window down here, I've got left and right arrows. And I can actually just click through and it'll show me the looks and what they would look like on my footage. And I can just kind of click through until I find one that looks good. I actually like SL Clean Fuji C, that's kind of cool. And now in order to apply this, I can either pick it out of the looks, drop down, but uh, would rather not. 
Instead, I can simply click on the name down here in the preview window and the look will be applied to my footage. You can control the intensity of the look, so how much of this look is going to be applied and affect your actual footage. So I'm just going to bump it up just a little bit more. I want this a little bit more intense, but it is starting to get a little bit too bright. So maybe I'll quickly jump back into basic correction and just bring the exposure down again a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. Let's come back into the creative tab and there's a whole bunch of other cool options. For example, I can make my footage look like faded film. This will essentially bring up the black point, so there's no true black in this image anymore. It just kind of goes down to gray and gives it this really old style feel. But I kind of dig this effect, so maybe just a little bit, just because it kind of looks cool. You can obviously sharpen your footage, and for that, let me quickly zoom in to 100%, so kind of see Walter's face nice and close up. And I always like to sharpen my footage a little bit. Obviously, if you go all the way, you kind of go overboard and it gets a bit grainy-ish, but you could technically denoise it as well afterwards if you wanted to. Personally, I just like to sharpen it maybe by 10 or so, 5 to 10 is usually okay, just a little bit. And let's zoom back out. Vibrance obviously is saturation, but it's kind of like smart saturation, so you can kind of bring that up if you want it to look a little bit more, it's a little bit more, more vibrant. It's a smarter way of doing saturation. It doesn't affect all of the areas in the image equally, and it looks a little bit more natural. But obviously you can also just bump up the saturation or just start draining it out. Maybe I'll drain out a little bit actually. And obviously color grading is absolutely subjective. So tweak this to your liking in any way you want just to achieve the look that you yourself are after. Finally, in the creative tab, you also have two controls where you can adjust the tint for your shadows and the tint for your highlights. So for example, you'd simply click into these and drag them up. So let's drag this up to say, I want my shadows to be tinted a little bit red. So I'll get a little bit red into the dark areas. And we want a bit of green in the highlight areas. So you can see it's getting a bit green around these lights here and around the fuse. And I can adjust the tint balance. And this is kind of determining the cutoff point between shadows and highlights and where this tint applies. So if you drag it all over to the left, only the highlight will apply. If you drag it all the way up, only the shadow tint applies. So this is kind of just adjusting the midpoint of where those two cut over. Cool, that's not too bad. Maybe I'll bring the faded film in a little bit. I think it's just a little bit too flat. I kind of like a little bit of contrast in my image. Let's come back up and collapse the creative tab. Let's expand the curves and I have talked about curves so many times, I don't know whether I really need to go over this. Your RGB curves simply allow you to adjust the input color and the output color for your general brightness, your red channel, your green channel and your blue channel individually. So for example, if you wanted to say I want to kind of bump up the highlights, then at the top end of the curve, which represents the bright areas in your image, you can kind of click and drag to add a bit more brightness in and maybe I'll drag that bottom one down so the dark areas will get a bit darker, the bright ones will get a bit brighter which will then increase the contrast. Um, obviously you can totally overdo it but again it's just a matter of style. If you want to delete any of these points you can simply hold down control and click on them and it'll delete the points again but uh, maybe a little bit of contrast I'll add back in just because I like it. Then there is the hue and saturation curves which you kind of just click and drag and you can adjust the saturation in your image and you can kind of turn it for giving it a hue angle which is kind of cool. But again, I'm probably just gonna leave this fairly default. Maybe I'll collapse this. And let's collapse the curves tab. Let's check out the color wheels. And again, this simply gives you three color wheels, a little bit more detailed now for shadows, mid-tones, and your highlights. And the slider on the left is simply the brightness. So this one here makes the shadows brighter or the shadows darker. And same for the highlights and the mid-tones. You can kind of just tweak this and obviously add a bit more green into the highlights or Maybe I'll add a bit more blue into the shadows and maybe a little bit of red into the midtones, And you can just kind of keep tweaking this until you get something that you're happy with. Let's close down the color wheels and let's look at secondary color correction. Now, secondary color correction is actually really important because sometimes when you grade and color correct your image, because you're affecting the entire image, some areas might just be totally out of whack and not at all what you want. For example, let's say this red scooter, I'm finding a bit too distractive in the image. I'd, I'd want to have that a little bit less saturated so it doesn't stand out so much and the main focus of the audience will really just be Walter with a bomb. In order to do that, I first need to define my key, my color key that selects the area I want to affect with secondary color correction. For that, let's simply use this color picker and pick the red of the scooter. This will set up these sliders here and I can actually drag these around or I can drag these little triangles to adjust what I'm catching. And as I'm dragging them, you see my preview window change and it changes to this little 
gray and color and it shows me which parts of the image I actually have selected. So right now I really just have the butt end of the scooter selected here which isn't really enough. So I'm gonna scoot this out a little bit. And so this obviously H stands for hue. So this is the color. Then S is for saturation. And again, you kind of slide this over and select different parts. So maybe I'll expand this just a little bit. Obviously I'm starting to select a little bit of red around the fuse, which I don't really want. So I'm kind of trying to keep this a bit more minimal and maybe on luminance as well. Let's expand this a little. That's working a bit better. So see, I'm selecting most of that scooter there without getting too much of the rest in. And you may have to play with these a little bit and just try and find that really nice balance where you're selecting most of the parts that you want to affect. So right now, I think that's actually quite good. So now that I've got this red area isolated, I can refine it, I can denoise the area I've got selected and I can blur it out just a little bit as well, just so the edges are a little bit softer. And now that I've got my key defined for what I want to apply secondary color correction to, I can come down and adjust the colors only in my selected areas. Now I could make this brighter or darker and you can see how that is mainly affecting just the scooter. It is catching a little bit of this fuse and I may want to play with these parameters a little bit more to so like really just the scooter. So let's reset this by double clicking on it. And all I want to do really is I want to drain some of the saturation out. So I'm just going to drag the saturation down and you can see how the scooter is kind of blending a little bit more into the background now. It's kind of going away. So it's just kind of not as obvious. I might actually tint it just a little bit more blue. Again, it's just kind of gonna fade a little bit more into the background. And maybe I'll make it just a little bit brighter actually, just so it blends a little bit nicer. And so it's just not so obvious anymore. Also, do take note that all of these tabs within the Lumetric color have a little tick flag. So if I collapse HSL secondary again, it's got this little tick flag and this just enable or disable. So this is without the secondary color correction. I'm finding it does stand out a little bit and that is with the correction. So it's kind of just, a little bit more faded away, not so obvious, and the focus should probably be more on Walter. And finally, another thing that will likely help the audience just focus on Walter in this particular shot. In Lumetri Color at the bottom, you will find a vignette. So let's open up this panel and here you can just apply a vignette. So if I drag the amount down to the left, you can see this nice dark vignette creep in on the corners. And I can adjust things like the midpoint, the roundness and how feathered it is. So you can kind of play with this. I think I'd actually like it fairly dramatic. So this is now our color correction. Let me close the Lumetri color panel. And here's the effect that Premiere Pro has automatically applied to the clip in our sequence. If we disable this effect, you can see the footage without any color correction or color grading or anything we've done in the Lumetri color panel. And then if you re-enable it, there you go. Here's our final corrected and graded footage. Obviously, if you really want it in the Lumetri color effect itself, you can expand all of these ones and tweak them individually, but you can see they're not as nice. They're not nice sliders. They're just kind of a bit more technical. So personally, I much prefer always just to bring up window, Lumetri color and just tweak everything in here. It is so much easier to use and so much more of a visual tool. Over time, I've actually become a very big fan of the Lumetri scopes and the Lumetri color tools ever since they've been introduced into Premiere Pro. And now they're also available in Adobe After Effects. I hope this was a useful overview of how these tools work and I hope that you enjoy using them whenever you have to color correct or color grade your footage. And it's as easy as that. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please show your support by liking, favoriting and sharing it with the world. Don't forget to subscribe if you do want to see some more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials just like this one. And if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.